And I would like to make a shield such as this one from the game Zelda and show you step by step how to do so. So why don't we get started by making a new part. And uh, let's start sketching. I want to, well, let's go on the right plane. I'm going to start with a three-point arc. And we can choose midpoint, coincident. Let's say we want our shield to be two feet tall. We'll constrain this to be vertical. And let's say we want to have a two-inch uh, curvature there. So we'll select OK. Now I'll create a plane. And let's sketch on it. I'm going to create another three-point arc. Uh, but that one seems to have disappeared. <laughs> so like a midpoint, and we'll want to pierce that horizontal. We'll give it the same dimensions, 24 inches, 2 inches over here, and we're fully defined. Uh, let's make this into a surface. We'll sweep a surface here. and hide this plane. So now if I hit Control 7 I've got the start of a shield. We of course want to make this a little bit more specific. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is go get on this front plane, just Control 8, and I want to create a sketch. And uh, let's use a uh, picture to sketch from as a reference. This specific part is a lot more artistic than having criticals, and so I'm going to break from my usual fashion from fully constraining everything and leave a lot of things unconstrained. Let's say, um, and then we'll choose a file. Um, and if you want to follow along, this picture can be downloaded from my GrabCAD account. The link to it is in the description. All right, so I've got this picture of a shield. Uh, now I know if I want my shield to be two feet tall, then end to end we'll just stick it there. Of course we need to see through it, so we're going to select full image. We'll move the transparency to 50 to 70. And again, proximity is going to do here. Uh, we want to get the top and bottom of this shield to just touch off at two feet. And that looks about right. Uh, let's create a line, midpoint construction line, and that will help me center You can of course access this by double clicking on the shield. And I think we're about centered there. Again, with sketch picture, you just eyeball it. Okay, um, now with this picture imported, we're going to be ready to actually start <laughs> making stuff. Um, I want to start by making this pattern. So we're sketching. Let's go again on the front plane. We go a little bit further out here. And again, we're eyeballing it. You can fully constrain this stuff. And you can also not fully constrain. <laughs> That's what I'm doing.
Okay, so we're going to say that that's good enough for our needs. I am going to exit, and with this highlighted, we're going to uh, grab features, curves, project curve, and we're going to put it right on the face that we've made. We'll probably have to reverse projection. And with that being projected, we're going to say sketch, 3D sketch, convert entities, and rebuild. So now I've got a 3D sketch that I can manipulate that begins and ends on this surface that we've created. Uh, so let's go ahead and manipulate that with this sketch highlighted. Um, actually, before I do that, I'll make another sketch on the right plane sketch center line and there I've got a construction line that I can use to dictate my direction so I can say features extrude and choose my 3d sketch and of course extruding from a 3d sketch you specify direction so now I have uh, very similar to a wrap but I have more functionality than a than a standard wrap does so I can extrude this to a distance of something like half an inch, you might want to go even further, one inch, doesn't really matter. Let's put a draft on it and say 45 degrees and notice I've got just a slight error there and what's happening at that corner is um, there's some kind of misalignment that is ultimately going to make this fail. So if I click OK, oh, it went through, but I do not want that. You, if you have that, will probably have an error because I've never actually had that work. So let's um, go up to my curve and edit the sketch. And it's good that that happened because if you're following along and have that happen, then hopefully uh, that will be helpful for you. So I'm just going to move this slightly and rebuild and uh, notice that that went away. So just keep playing with it and it will go away. Uh, we can even uh, adjust that to be a sharper, we could do something like 60 degrees so it sits a little bit more flat. I think that's maybe a little bit more realistic and realistic may be the wrong word to use but there it is. Let's hide this curve and uh, if you want a better view, you can, of course, just hide the sketch. So that's what we've got so far. We can mirror this, and we'll probably want to do a body mirror, since we're not technically having a solid other than, than this. So let's choose a mirror face there. And that body, we Failed to mirror, so just uncheck Merge Solids if you have that checked, because that's throwing it off. So, uh, there's our first design. Let's make another design. Um, again, I'm going to show my sketch. Select my front plane. Sketch. Let's do, I think this is a dragon. Let's do the dragon wing. Again, I recommend using two-point splines. If you haven't seen my other videos, I'll give you the spiel again. Uh, two-point splines are a lot more controllable than uh, clicking multiple points on these splines. So all we're doing is, of course, you have an angle and you have a length and angle. So I just click the very end of that arrow and just drag it to what appears to be the best fit. Again, sketch from picture is for art, like we're making more art than something engineered right now. Um, and on these splines, for instance, at this junction, this looks to be kind of linear. Uh, for interest of time, I'm not going to worry about it, but you can always confirm a tangent relation um, on some of these more linear elements. And that would just be good form I guess. Uh, that's curved but for our purposes we can approximate that to a line or you can just do another spline right there, it doesn't really matter. 
We're going to do another spline here and notice the quality of my picture is fading quick, but I'm going to estimate an endpoint right there. And grabbing the end of the arrow. Another spline. Let's go here. In fact, you could probably two-point spline this entire, I don't know what you call that, a wing, a feather or something. And, uh, and it would be all right. It doesn't look half bad. I think we're a little bit more pointed up there. So again, I'm making some eyeball adjustments on the fly. You can use a different image if, uh, if you prefer. All right. Here I've got a much clearer portion of my image. There's the end of my arrow, and we'll grab here. And then, of course, um, you can always adjust both sides for an extra fine fit. Now, I'm guessing the microphone is picking up on a little bit of snoring. I have to tell you the backstory on that. My very beautiful wife uh, just gave birth to her first daughter oh, two weeks ago. I think this is her two-week birthday. And so it was a very rough labor period. We had our daughter is exceptionally healthy and exceptionally advanced and mature for being a newborn, but there was a lot of complications for my wife, and so she's had a really tough recovery uh, from this birth. And so she, we, I was gonna just kind of keep her company as she sat uh, with our newborn, but she's uh, <laughs> she's fallen asleep, and so I'm doing this video as she's sleeping. Of course, I think that it's also ostensible that you can say my videos are so boring that it causes people to go to sleep. I would not be offended. So just this once, I'll add a tangent. And then, of course, with these tangents, you have to uh, readjust your fit just a little bit. And that's a bit better. Okay, so you can tell we've got the darker shaded region, and of course if you're running 2015 or sooner, you won't have shaded regions, but this shows us that we have an enclosed sketch. Very handy tool. Okay, um, now I want to be able to wrap this, but of course I need to have a solid to wrap onto. So this plane all by itself is no good. So um, I'm going to add one more feature into my sketch, or actually create a new sketch that's going to front plane. And uh, again, make sure that uh, your image is showing. And we're going to create a sketch. Here. And Again, I'm going to trace this with a spline. And I'm making sure to draw two point splines. I don't want to click more than twice just to start and end it. Now I can adjust the curvature to a curvature that I think will fit. And now I want to be very uh, cautious because I can trace the other side, but I will never get it perfect. And so to avoid something that wouldn't be symmetric, I'm going to mirror what I've already created. Just like that. Okay, now I have the luxury of saying on surfaces, trim surface, 
we're going to specify the sketch as our trim tool and select these two outsides and make sure I have remove selected and there we go uh, again I need to have a solid so let's thicken this and if I think about what a realistic weight would be for Link to be running around and carrying that shield it would probably be a sixteenth of an inch thick 625 of course nothing about this is truly realistic but and the surface could not be thickened. There we go. So I simply uh, uh, moved the thickness to the other side and it seemed to have worked out well. So now that we have a solid, let's start our wrap. We're going to say features, wrap. We're going to choose our sketch, this face. We're going to emboss and let's do a thickness now yeah, let's try a quarter inch that's heavy but that's not bad so now that we know that we're wrapping well I'm going to go back in my wrap and simply add some more to my sketch first thing Can I do that? I think I can get away with doing that for my spline. Let's see how it goes. And there we are. And there we are again. I'm going to make this into just one. So we'll have a little bit of extra thickness down there. Minor modification. Now I think my spline would be capable of going to that tangent point. Again, another measure is making sure that those are tangent. For interest of speed, I'm going to keep going. And yours, you can make it much better than I'm going to do in this video. Go ahead and add that tangent relation if you'd like. And again, you can add a tangent there. There's the end. Not bad. Let me go here. Just for a good measure, I try to make sure that this point is to the side that I want it to of my center line so things don't cross over the center line prematurely. I'll take a center line. We'll move from here to here. Let's mirror. I'm going to choose this line to mirror about, and I will lasso select. Of course, lasso selecting is just clicking and dragging. You right click, um, and under selection, you can just change it to lasso, and then you can click and drag. That's how you get the lasso. So, you know, I might as well 
mirror my other entities, and if I was astute, I would have done that in the same mirror. Again, lasso. And since we have the darker region, we know we've uh, mirrored well. Let's do these, what do you call them, claws, talons? I think it's a dragon. Okay, and just that a little bit more. Let's, I'm going to make these simple lines. And again, if you'd like to make this perfect, you can use the tangent relations. In the interest of speed, you can see how getting all the tangents and everything adjusted perfectly and everything would just take a lot more time. So let's mirror and a lasso here and a mirror here and I think we've done it so if I hide my sketch you can see the work that we've done so far we've been able to uh, extrude these and uh, wrap this now uh, let's let's work on the Triforce Again on the front plane, we'll sketch. I am going to eyeball these. Uh, for extra accuracy, you can always use the uh, equal relation. So I'm doing this triangle to start off with because uh, we can only project curves according to one, and, if, and you can see we want to be able to draft. So we're going to do one at a time and mirror one. Uh, so let's go with highlighting here, features, curves, project curve, and we'll choose this face, reverse direction. So now we're projecting our curve, sketch, 3D sketch, convert entities, rebuild. So now with my 3D sketch highlighted, features, extrude, and I think blind is fine. We'll just have to choose a direction vector. So we'll choose, was it, I think it's sketch five. And now we'll choose a draft angle. 45 degrees is good, but we'll need to make this something like 0.25. And that should be the dimension that we're looking for. Since we're going to create zero thickness geometry with this extrude, I'm going to select direction 2 and under distance 0 0.005. All right, we're going to go 5,000 the other direction. And now the zero geometry, zero thickness geometry is resolved. A bit tedious, but let's do the same thing again. Front plane, sketch, I'm going to come close but not touch the corners. Avoid a little zero thickness. Another zero thickness. And I'm going to come close to this line but not touch with the horizontal constraint on. And there. A little bit further. That should be fine. Again, um, Rebuild, Features, 
Let's go with curves. Project onto this face. Make sure that we have the right direction. And it looks like we've lost a curve there. That's due to an intersection where the top of the shield comes out, and I should have seen that coming. So why don't we fix that? I'm going to uh, select my front plane, reference, plane, and uh, notice I'm offsetting this an inch and a half above the shield. So now that I have plane 3, I'm going to drag plane 3 way up here so that I can reference it retroactively. I'm uh, going to take a look at line curve 4. We're going to edit the sketch plane on curve 4. And instead of the front plane, choose plane 3. And now our curve is complete. So that's how to resolve that error. Uh, with this curve highlighted, sketch, 3D sketch, convert entities, rebuild, and now with that highlighted features, extrude, and I can choose my direction vector. And now we've replicated the second part of the Triforce. Of course, we've seen uh, the zero thickness, so we're going to give that a 5,000 dimension, and that will resolve the zero thickness. Now I'm not in the mood to do that again, so let's grab right plane, mirror, and uh, I'm pretty sure I can make that a feature now that I'm working off the of solids. So there I've completed the Triforce. Let's work on perhaps the slightly less trivial shield outline here. The first thing that I want to do is again sketch on the front plane. Thankfully we don't have any intersection to worry about, but if you want to be safe you can also select plane 3, create a 2D sketch, and I'm going to create an outline of these features. Trying to match this, of course, as closely as possible, but being in the realms of art, this is uh, less critical. There's a decent amount of fudge factor. Now come in this way, we'll add in a spline. Now of course this is where we want to be very careful because we don't want to create a situation where something isn't symmetrical. Grab a center line and we'll be prepared to mirror so that we'll maintain symmetry. Until then, in fact I can probably choose tangent <laughs> okay, in fact I will convert entities here and there. And in this case, I can go all the way around. All right, let's mirror. We're going to choose our line of symmetry. Let's see if I can do this. I think my lasso for some reason is invisible. Nope, so I'll just click on these entities since I can't seem to lasso here for some reason. Now 
there we are. Get that sketch done. Now I have the luxury of features, extrude, and since this is a 2D extrusion, I simply select my sketch. Of course, it only selected part of my sketch, so I'll go back into the Edit Sketch Environment, Features, Extrude, and then I can choose my contour. Up to face, or I can choose up to body too. Choose up to surface here. And now in direction two, I can go way longer than I need to. Let's go an inch. There we have a relatively deep set shield and decently smooth transition. You have a little fillet there, but that's a sacrifice I am willing to make. Okay, now I want this face to match the profile of this face. So what I'll do is, again, with this bottom face highlighted, I don't recommend uh, using this top face up here. Let's use this bottom face. And while I'm at it, I'm going to hide this plane. And I think I might be able to go, get away with hiding this sketch. We'll see if I need to turn it back on later. Get this bottom face. Go to the Surfaces tab. Let's offset surface. There we go. So you can see exactly how offset we are. I want to go the thickness of my material, 0 0.0625, plus another half inch. And there I have a surface. Now what I can do is say Thicken Cut from my surface offset. And we can give this a thickness way higher than we need to. We can go 10 inches and of course reverse the side. And now I've making, or I've made rather my profile uh, exactly how I've wanted to. I can even go a little bit more thick. I think in the video games it appears a little bit more thick. So let's go to the surface offset and um, maybe make this 0 0.6625. We'll go 0 0.6 inches up. Or we can make it whatever dimension we wish. I might adjust that 10 more times before the video is through, for all I know. I'm going to highlight and, uh, yeah, not bad. Okay, um, we're probably, you know, I, I really do want to make that a bit more thick. This isn't realistic looking, but in Zelda, it, I just get the impression, especially if I play N64, that this outer border is quite thick. So let's go to our offset surface one more time. I want to make this maybe 7625, maybe point 1.0625 maybe. That's quite thick, but oh well, I'll probably adjust it again later. Now that we have that done, there's a few other features that we would want to address. We want to add fillets. I want to add some sort of strap mechanism back here. So first things first, if I grab my front plane, I think I'd be better off with plane three sketch I'm going to choose a midpoint line we'll make that vertical You know what? I'm probably going to go back to the front plane. I don't normally flip-flop this much on videos, but uh, this one's a doozy. Okay. So 
So let's take the sketch that we just made, edit sketch plane, and front plane. Again, this is eyeballing it, but that doesn't look too bad. Extrude cut. It doesn't really matter how deep we go because I'm going to draft it. Our draft angle determines when this ends. That's probably a realistic depth. So there's one. Uh, what I'd like to do is grab my right plane sketch and create a cutaway. Draw a center line about there. That will be an axis of rotation. Again, this is art. There's some fudge factor. Uh, let's say features. Let's go with circular pattern. Under direction, I'll choose the line that I just sketched. Uh -huh. Of course, I just made it my face, so what have I done? Let's delete this. Okay, one more time. <laughs> Circular pattern. Here's my direction, and my feature is this. Now I can make this go anywhere that I want to. Let's make that wireframe so we have a feature that is internal but not showing up. So we will um, edit our circular pattern and uncheck geometry pattern, and that will probably fix it. That's a bit better. And now I can simply mirror. already knows what I want to mirror, and <laughs> there we go. So that's an option there. We can do the same down here. And it gets maybe perhaps a little bit tedious doing the same thing over and over, but the end result, we're not looking too bad. Let's sketch. We're going to make this equal. Since I've got a straight line here, I can choose parallel, and that will line up the triangle pretty nicely. And again, I am eyeballing it. If, uh, if I want to be more precise, I can choose a center line to go to my midpoint there. Select midpoint coincident, and then I'm even better aligned uh, if that's something you want to do. Okay, again, I'm a little bit high. I've done the same thing all over again, so we'll select this sketch, edit sketch plane, and we'll move it to the front plane so it'll be a little bit lower. Oh, but we are too low there, so let's control Z. Instead, I will hopefully be able to scale this up to a decent size. Let's do an extruded cut, and we'll choose a draft. We can choose a little bit of a tighter draft angle. And there we have it. Uh, one more to go. Let's go with 
mirror. And that's it. Okay. I'm going to make another sketch, and this will determine a, a location. So, a sketch. Again, I think I can afford to go on the front plane. That looks good. In this active sketch, I'm going to make sure that we are tangent. 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 So that's a, a sort of a center, if you will. We're going to make this for construction. We'll make this have a dimension of Maybe a 1.25 inch diameter. That's not bad. I'm going to do something similar over here. Actually, I don't need to make that a separate sketch. So let's find another proverbial center. Let's go coincident. Come on. Coincident. And coincident. So there's kind of a center there. We'll say for construction. Draw another circle. And of course, equal. And I might as well draw a center line. Select this. Choose mirror entities about the line I've just drawn. Features. Extruded cut. <laughs> a bit too deep there. All right, now we can kind of step it down until we've gone all the way in. So if I choose 0.55, might be 0.6. I'm going to go with 0.6. It doesn't really matter. There's lots of fudge factor. All right, with these holes. Let's choose Dome. And if you ever search for a command and wonder where to find it, you can always hit Dome, click on that little eyeball, and SolidWorks autonomously opens up, highlights it with the mouse, and gives you a little arrow so you can choose it that way. Uh, we're going to choose here. How about I try a one inch Dome? Mm -hmm. Looks about right ish here. Oh, that kind of messes it up, so let's do separate domes. <laughs> oh, but I don't want that, I want that. Okay, I think we've got um, most of the features on the front of the shield done. Let's have a look. Yep, I don't see much that isn't uh, already represented in our image, so we've done a pretty good job. Uh, this is probably, a, I, I'm not done, but I think it's a decent stopping point to add some color.
So the first thing I'll do is add color to the entire model. Part one, we'll make this metal, steel perhaps, and go with like a brush steel. Now I'll choose this face. You can make it kind of a, I don't know what you call it, helium blue. It's kind of of a darker, it looks kind of like the same color as the shield and it has some good reflectivity on it. Not bad. I'll choose wrap two. I like that dark red a lot. Probably go with that. Let's choose appearances, maybe a face, and I can highlight these faces. These are, I think there's 12 faces here. Give it a nice yellow. That's looking a lot more like Zelda. A helium shield. Why don't we do the back? I'm not sure why those faces are highlighted. I think it might have been something I've done off camera, but either way, I don't think these will affect us at all. Let me grab the front plane. I'm going to make another datum plane. Let's flip the offset. That's actually not a bad height, so inch and a half above the front plane. Let's make a sketch. Four center rectangles. Vertical. Vertical. Horizontal, horizontal, equal, equal. Okay. We'll make these say eight inches. Eight inches, two point five, one, watch out for any uh, automatic constraints that might snap as these get moved around. We'll center this with collinear equal. Now that we're fully constrained, Features, extrude, up to surface. So there we go. We'll add some straps. Sketch. Now let's see if I section this. Makes it a little bit easier to see. Another center rectangle. Point one, hmm. that's having a hard time dimensioning, so. Undo that. Ugh, come on. Point one. Point one. Point one. I want to actually make this point three.
features, extruded cut. I, I'm guessing that I can actually send it to this face, but uh, I think it'll be actually more simple as just a workflow to say up to next. So got that taken care of. I'm going to sketch on this face now. Let's do another corner rectangle. Make these collinear. And give that a height of 0 0.1. Let's do an extruded cut. So we made this an inch. This is 0 0.6 inches. Go 0 0.65, I like that. Great. Highlight this top face and sketch. I want to see the internal features, so let's change the uh, draw style. There we go. Point four four five would be good. Point three five I like even better. So with this, uh, I'm actually getting into this sketch. We'll say features, extrude cut Up to next. Although up to next is going too deep. Let's see if I can find a good view here. I don't want to have to mess with this too much, so we'll say up to surface and I'll simply say this surface. Changing our draw style. That's what we want. Now let's do a pattern. First thing I'll do is mirror. Because we've constrained it the way that we have, this should go pretty easy. We've done this cut extrude, and then we go to cut five and cut six. Not bad. Let's uh mirror. And there we go. Let's hide plane 4. We no longer need to see it. And I'm going to create a new plane. The dead center on here. Sketch and I want to cut my view. Sketching like this makes it harder, but it's also a little bit more rewarding because you get to see in real time what's going on. I just want to create a line and an arc. From that point, we can create a dimension. And we're going to dimension that to 0.05. Choosing that point. I'm 
to make those vertical. And I don't see what that problem is. But that coincident relation, I think, or to not snap. Make that coincident. There we go. I can make these three points horizontal, so we've got a complete 180. And we can set the radius of the arc by offsetting from this surface, let's say 0.05. Make another line. <laughs> and again, I have the dilemma of SolidWorks not selecting what I want, but I think I finally got something there. We'll choose horizontal. I'm going to add a three-point arc tangency will be implied if I make that horizontal from the center. Add a straight and another arc. horizontal again, so we end on a vertical tangent, and we'll come out here. Point oh five. Vertical, or horizontal rather. I'll make these equal. Now I simply need to add a tangent relation. Of course, if that doesn't work out, I'll just uh, create my own. 0.15 should be excellent. So let's go. Can't seem to select that. There you go. We'll just call that coincident. We'll make that horizontal. Adding another three-point arc. Again, establishing a horizontal constraint. I'm going to make a center line that I won't worry about constraining. I'm going to select everything that I've sketched so far mirror about my center line and there we have it let's do another arc and of course will be tangent and that's about what I want. There I can undo my section view. We'll go with a radius of 1.5. Let's go with a radius of 6 here. That's not too bad. 
Let's do another arc. Tangent. Cocentric. And I like that little flap right there. So let's say dimension. About 0.75. I can include that in my mirror. Just like that. Rebuild. Finally, I want to make another plane, and again, it will be normal to this endpoint. Let's try a dimension. Try a center rectangle and relative to our origin will be coincident. Let's go with 0.85. In fact, let's go with 0.9. And here, let's go with 2.25, perhaps. And I'm at 0 0.09. Then strip. Now let's do a sweep features. Sweep this profile on this path. And there we have a strap. for your arm, or for Link's arm. <laughs> that seems like a good width. Appearances, sweep. We're going to make this with so organic miscellaneous leather. And that kind of pops out quite nicely color-wise. Hide the plane and hide the plane. Choose a plane here, we'll say that plane, mirror, and that did not show up, so I'm going to clear. And it looks like it's not giving me any options, so let's delete. I'll choose mirror again. This time I'll choose bodies. And we mirror no problem. So that'll be our strap on the back side of the shield. Let's do a few other uh, housekeeping items. Perhaps I can fill it 0.15 radius. I did not mean to click that face.
I'll select the outside of this as well. Now uh, we can try point two five, point four five. That would be a good radius. Fill it. Fill it of point one. doesn't want to uh... there we go again since we've done this by eyeballing it yours is going to look a little bit different than mine so you may have to adjust your fillet radiuses accordingly and again that's no big deal There we go. Let's give that 0.15 and do the same thing here. There we go. Adding another fillet. Now that's going to come quite close. As you can see, we can't do it, so we're going to leave that separate. And we'll leave that separate as well. Same thing over here.
Now we'll pick up on the last stragglers that we couldn't get. Okay, I think that is a decent shield from Zelda. I think there's some details that could be added, like a border that goes around here. Uh, so feel free to even improve this, upload it to GrabCAD, um, share with everyone what you've done. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.